So last time we compiled this test package, we uh, discussed what, what is package XML and what it contains. We also discussed CMake list. Uh, and for now we have really simple CMake list, really basic, the simplest one we could have. Uh, and it works because we don't have any message definitions, any services and so on. So today we will modify it. And we have our two our nodes, one for generating sign signal, this one, and we added some log info here last time. Uh, and another node for reading this signal and for filtering it with uh, moving average, if you remember. So we are subscribing to signal, uh, computing uh, moving average on each callback and also publish the new filtered signal. So for all, for all of that, we used a standard message called float32. So our signal, our publisher in this case, and our uh, publisher and subscriber in this case, they all work with specific message type called float32 from the package standard messages, which contains the simplest messages, uh, just simplest data types we can use in messages. Uh, and it worked fine for us. But now we want to uh, do something more complex. Imagine that this is uh, the signal generator node is a real sensor. And for real sensor, we usually want to know when data was acquired because it could be important for us to use timestamp to filter the data somehow. So now we want to define the new message type, which will contain, apart from the signal itself, it should contain uh, some uh, time stop or uh, time when this message was acquired. So for that, we will create a new folder here called MSG. This is a standard folder name for storing message definition. Uh, and then we will create new file and we'll call, we will call our own message type signal. Uh, and it should have MSG uh, type here. Uh, and then we can define our message here again in the same way as it defined, for example, here. So we will use different data types. And in this case, we want to use data type called header. Let's see what it is. Uh, so header, header is, is a specific uh, uh, message type of ROS, which is defined uh, in standard messages package. And header contains uh, three fields. One is sequence ID. Uh, it is just a number of a message uh, and it consequently increasing uh, and it, it increases automatically. So we don't have to modify this field. Ross will do it for us. Uh, so we, by using this field, we would know which uh, message it is in a row. So first one, second one, and so on. Also, there is timestamp and that's what we need. Uh, usually uh, we use it to store time when the data was acquired and it used in uh, high level algorithms to understand or interpolate data or either filter it. And also there is frame ID. As you know, in robotics, there can be different sensors installed in different parts of the robot. And we want to know some transformation between them because uh, for example, if we have camera looking backwards, we need to know that this particular camera is looking backwards because it's installed on the back of our robot. And this frame ID is the name of a frame or coordinate system in which the data was acquired. And by knowing in which coordinate systems different uh, sensor acquired data, we can somehow transform from one coordinate system to another to work with this data in 3D. And for this, uh, there is a really, a powerful library inside the ROS. We will discuss it shortly in the next le lecture. It is called TF or from transform. Um, and this library allows us to perform um, this data transformation from one coordinate system to another. Th that is why this header message is really widely used. In reality, every uh, data type which uh, used, every message type which used for a sensor data distribution has this header inside because for us it is important when it was acquired and which coordinate system it was acquired and which uh, number uh, or which ID uh, this particular message has. So we will use this header uh, inside our signal messages. So let's add header. Uh, 
uh, and we will call it simply header. So this is a head, header uh, field which has header type. And then we will use our standard float 64, which we already used for float 32, I think. Yes, float 32 um, for data. So, but it should be from, I think, like this. Uh, and we will call it signal. So our new message type will contain these two fields. Uh, and it will be really similar to what we used before, but only for each signal, uh, we will have also header, which we can fill inside our filter generator and on the in the filter a signal field in our signal generator in our signal filter we will be able to see when this data was acquired and in which coordinate system. So now we have to modify our nodes to work with this data type. Um, since this signal message is inside our test package, we will need to import it in the following way. Uh, test package. Uh, and we have to write message here because this allow Ross to understand that inside test package, it will be looking for message folder uh, or for message definition. Even the, if the folder is called in a different way, it still will be able to find messages. And here we just import signal. Uh, let's do the same in our signal generator node. And now we have to modify our subscribers and publishers because now we are using different type of message, which is called signal, signal here. And also in the processing code, uh, you can see that we are receiving some signal and uh, reading the data field, but, but now we don't have this field called data. We only have field called signal. Let's read this one. And here is the same. Uh, and for publishing to, uh, to our publisher, to our new topic, which is called filter signal, we need to modify this code slightly. Uh, we will create new object of this class. So actually every message is a class. So we will call it filtered signal and it will have signal type like this. And then to this filtered signal, uh, we are writing this uh, sum not to the whole message, but to a particular field called signal because we defined it like that. So there is a field called signal and to this field we will write the uh, average, moving average of our signal. And also we want to fill timestamp as you remember. Uh, so let's also add this line, filter signal, header, because there is a header value inside our signal definition. Uh, and inside header, we, you can see that uh, field which is storing timestamp called stamp. So we need to access this particular field. Mm. And there is a specific function in RossPy to get current time. Uh, let's get the current time through RossPy uh, time dot now. So this function just returns current system time and we've stored this time into stamp inside header. So we will not fill other values uh, of uh, header such as sequence because we know that sequence is increased automatically and there is also frame ID but in our case we don't have some particular frames uh, or coordinate system that's why we will leave this field empty. Okay, this is for signal filter node. We also need to modify in the, in the same way signal generator node. Uh, so here we are generating data. So let's perform the following new signal value. It's signal. This is an instance of class signal. And now um, we need to assign data to the field signal. And to the field header stamp, we again will assign the current time. So let's try this. New signal value, header stamp ROS by time now. Okay, it should work. Now, in order to compile our signal, because we added new message generation, we need to modify both CMake list and package XML. And this is a tricky part because 
uh, people run into a lot of problem by adding their own message definitions because there are many things we should remember while doing that because of that we have a specific slide uh, with all possible things we have to remember while adding our messages so first of all we need to update dependencies in our package XML because there are two particular packages used for message generation in ROS. So we can just copy them and modify our package XML uh, by adding new dependencies. So one for a build time, another one for execution time. So message generation on a build time and message runtime for using our own messages while running ROS system. Okay, next we need to modify um, our uh, CMake list by adding uh, message generation dependency in find packages. So we will use this message generation uh, package for compiling our messages. So we need to add it here. Uh, and now our ROS while compiling our package will know that we depend from message generation and we'll find this package in our system. Uh, and also standard messages, we already have standard messages here. Yeah, that's it. Um, now we need to add message runtime to our Katkin package definition here. So you don't have to remember all of this. You usually just Google how to compile messages because it's really complex and many steps to compile messages. Usually you just, uh, usually you just find it uh, on the tutorial pages and just repeat from there because it's really complex and and a lot of steps. Uh, and then we actually have to tell uh, our Katkin that there are some particular messages in our package we want to generate. For that, there is a commented part of code here uh, with just some examples. You can see there is message one and message two. We can remove them uh, and substitute with our message, which is called signal MSG. Signal MSG. So now we add message files, which means we tell our Katkin that we want to compile our particular messages. And then add command to generate messages and description file. This is the last piece. Uh, we have to tell Katkin to generate actually messages. Uh, and it is also already here, just commented. Uh, and you see that services are generated in the same way. So in this lecture, we'll also write our own service. Uh, so we want, uh, we will not perform the, the same job once again because messages uh, and uh, services are compiling in the same way. So I think that's it. Let's go and try to compile our uh, package now with, with all these modifications, with our personal signal message type and with modifications in our uh, source code, which is now using uh, signal type from the same package. So we need to source first from devil set up ZCH. Okay, and now perform cutkin make and we, if we've done everything correctly, it should compile our message. Let's see. Mm -hmm. We see that it compiles test package and it seems that it works correctly. Let's source once again and now let's try to launch our system. For that we will need a second terminal window. Let's run it. Let's also source. Uh, let's go to the working directory. Let's source and now let's launch um, ROS core first as usual. Okay, we, we have ROS core running. Just a second, it's still launching. Uh, and now we're using ROS run. Res, let's run our test package signal generator node. Mm -hmm. And there is some error. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. I think we forgot to change something here. Yes, you see, we receive signal. 
Oh, field signal generator node. Uh, yeah, here in, in log info, we tried to print the whole new signal value. And it worked previously because signal value had only one field with signal itself. But now signal is something more complex with two data fields and we cannot just print it like that. That is why we have to substitute new signal value here with sig new signal value signal like this because we want to print a particular field from our complex message. I think this is a problem. Let's try to run it once again. Uh -huh. And we've still got uh, some problem. Type error, expected float 32, but got test package signal. And in which line? Line 121, uh, just a sec, line 38, line 38, launch signal generator. Mm -hmm. Publish. Let's see. Uh -huh. We forgot to substitute publisher's definition here. You see, we still have float 32, but working with, with a signal. So we have to change it to signal here. Okay, it's good. We're running into these problems. So we see how it should work. Okay, now we fixed all problems and you see that our uh, signal generator node works in it prints some data but now it prints data from this particular field and we can for example add printing of another field let's try it so now we want um, to print for example time uh, timestamp it's timestamp and now new signal value uh, header stamp this field to see the current time on which we generated our data. Let's try it. Yes, you see we have a timestamp here. This is a specific uh, format of timestamp. Uh, it can be converted into hours, minutes, and seconds, but this is particular format used in ROS. Uh, there is convertation function uh, within ROS which allows us to understand in to, to transform this in human readable format. But for now, it is not important for us. Uh, we just know that there is timestamp, which we uh, could transform in uh, understandable format if required. Okay, so now let's run our signal uh, filter node and see if they work correctly together. Yes, we see that it also works. It subscribes to this particular topic. And we can check that uh, something actually changed uh, by checking the type of the topic published. Uh, let's open new terminal. Let's source first, as usual. And using ROS topic list, we can see that there is topic called signal, for example. And we can check the type of this topic. Uh, so ROS topic info signal and we see that it has type of test package signal which means everything worked correctly so now we are using our own defined message type uh, we could define something more complex so now you know how to define your own messages and if there is no standard message for your particular application you can define your own message in the same way and use it in your package and in other packages uh, to uh, organize some communication of uh, complex data formats. So once again, we defined our uh, specific message in, in the folder message within our package. We called it a uh, signal, but we could give different names. There is just the standard that it should start from capital letter. And this file should have name, uh, it should have message, dot message definition. Uh, here we can use either simple data types such as float32 or other message formats. For example, now we can define some new message which will have our signal message inside it. So we could do something like this uh, and it will also work. Uh, and then we import it into our nodes by, uh, by marking the package from which we should import. Uh, don't forget to have dot message here because it tell Ross that we are importing messages from this 
particular package and by defining publishers and subscribers using this particular message type. And then in processing code, we just access uh, uh, access particular data fields through the dot and name of these data fields, which always can be found in message definition. So here we have two data fields called header and signal. Uh, and that is how we, we access this particular data field signal here and header uh, and something inside header here. So are there any questions? Okay, if there, if there are no questions, let's move to the next lecture, lecture 10. We will continue discussing uh, communication types within ROS in this particular lecture. Uh, let me actually send you the lecture uh, to the chat so you could copy comments from there if you are trying to repeat after me. And we will start from discussing services. So I hope everything about uh, topics is clear for you now. You know how to work with topics, how to write publishers, subscribers, you know how to define your own message types. Um, and now let's discuss services. So while topics are something uh, non-blocking type of communication and one-way communication, so data is streamed from publisher to subscriber, there is a second type called service. Uh, so it's request response communication type, and it is important that it's blocking. So while uh, we send request and wait for the service server to answer, our node which sent this request is blocked. So it cannot continue performing some uh, useful data processing. It just waits for the response. That is why you should be really careful about using services because they're blocking and usually even li uh, only lightweight uh, communication lightweight processing functions are used within services so if you want some um, some some task which takes time to perform but also you want to use request response communication time type you should use actions and we will see how actions work today also. So there is the same table from the last lecture which compares topics, topics, services, and actions. Um, and here is again from the last lecture simple example. Imagine we want to know time but we don't want to know to know it constantly. We just want sometimes to ask for current time. Then we can implement server which we ask for a current time and it answers us with this particular time. And we also can define um, user-defined services. So there are standard services. There are just three of them. They're defined in package called standard service. Uh, and there are three types of standard services. Uh, let's check them. Uh, so there is empty service. This dashed line uh, splits the request and response. So both request and response are defined in one file. Uh, above the dashed line, there is request. So in this particular case, we, re we send request, which is Boolean data. And as a response from a server, we get uh, two uh, data fields. One is Boolean success or failure. And one is string message, which is informational and can be, for example, used for error messages. So this is one of the standard service types, which is called set bool. And here is a definition. So above dashed line is request, underneath is response. So there is empty server service because both request and response are allowed to be empty. So sometimes we have services in which we don't want to send any data. We want just to trigger something. Uh, and there is also trigger uh, type where we don't send anything, but as a return or response, we get Boolean and uh, message type. So these are three standard message types, but there are many more um, services defined in ROS you can use, but you also can define your own. And that's what we will do uh, now. So what we also need to discuss about services is that they also can use 
uh, as, as the same way as messages, they can use standard data types that can, they can use uh, user defined uh, message types as their data fields. Uh, and they also can have dynamic or static length arrays. So it is quite the same as messages, but we have two parts of the definition, request and response. Both parts are allowed to be empty and there is even standard service called empty where both request and response are empty. So there is no data sent to server and no data sent back to client, but still this service triggers uh, server and there is some process uh, which is triggers client in, re in return. So on the slides, there are uh, examples of uh, ROSPy API, which we, you can use to write a service server and service client. Uh, let's right away try it within our uh, package. So first we will define our service, our own service type. Uh, for that, we will create new folder called SRV. Uh, so it's one of the folders of our test packages, test package here. And inside this folder, we will define new file and we will call it, uh, actually let's use slides because there is already implemented uh, example. So we will define service for computing a median. So our signal filter node computes average here. But what if we also want to compute median of our last five uh, signal values, but we don't want to compute it uh, all the time. We just want uh, some service to compute it sometime with when only when we need it. So that is why we will define a uh, service here to compute median of the last five uh, signal values. So for that, uh, we will call our service uh, get window median as it's written here on the slides. Uh, and this is the name we will give to our service, getWindowMedian.srv. Uh, so this is the service we have. Uh, so we will have empty request because we just want to ask node to compute median. We don't want to send any data uh, to our service. And as a response, we'll have two things. First of all, Boolean uh, value, uh, which indicates either median was uh, computed successfully or not, the same as here. So Boolean success. And also we'll have float32 uh, median value. So like this. So there is empty request. We don't send any data to our service. And as a response, we expect our service to return uh, success or failure and uh, compute median. median. Uh, okay, so that's it. Now uh, we have our service definition. We want to import it uh, into our signal filter node. Let's import our service. And you can see that in case of messages, we had dot message here. And in the case of services, we'll have dot SRV here. And we import two things. Actually, while uh, compiling service, uh, ROS, compi uh, ROS uh, prepares three different classes. First is called the same way as service, and it contains both response and request. It is the same as we had for signal. So you remember that from our message definition, ROS prepared a class, which instance we created here. So filtered signal here is instance of class signal. And in the same way we could do with uh, get window median, but also it prepares two additional classes, one for response and one for request. And uh, our service our, uh, service server will need to use response type in order to return something uh, when we request service to be uh, executed. So that is why we'll use this one. So there is a third one uh, called request, but we will not uh, need it in our simple example. Okay, so now we have uh, import. What's next? Next, we have to define our service within our node. The same way as we define publishers and subscribers, we will define our service here. Let's call it 
uh, get median. And here is the definition. So the same way as subscriber and publisher, we define service, uh, which is called get median. This is the name of service. It, it has a type of get window median. So the same is in publisher and subscriber, there is a message type. Here we define service type. And also there is function which will be triggered every time service is called. Uh, we need to have self here because it happens inside class. We could only we could define it as function somewhere here. Uh, but since we are writing everything within our signal filter class, we need to add self here. Uh, and this is the same as callback. So you remember in subscriber, we define signal callback. This is a function which is called every time new data comes uh, into the topic. In the same way here, we define handle function, uh, which is called every time, uh, every time our service is called. So let's define now this uh, function, handle get median. First argument is always self, if it is if it written inside class. And then we will get some request here. Uh, and what we perform inside this uh, function is the following. So we have our signal window, which contains last five uh, signal values. So we will define response in the following way, response uh, is equal to this class. So, and we know that this response class will have fields which are written here, uh, not here, in our service definition. So it will have success and median uh, fields. So in success, well, let's just copy. We'll just simply write true because we believe that everything works fine. Uh, and into response field, into the median field, we will put the computed median. So response.median is equal. And now we need to compute median of last five uh, signals, which are stored in signal window of size five. For this, we will use numpy and function median. Uh, and just get give it a signal window, which is an array uh, or actually a few of five uh, signal values. Uh, and then we will have to write return function, which returns response. So every function uh, processing service uh, needs to have return, which returns uh, the message of type uh, service name, so doesn't matter how our service is called, service name, and then response. In our case, service is called get window median. That is why we have get window median response class, and exactly uh, instance of this class will be returned from the service. So I think that's it. Uh, now we will only need to modify CMake list txt. As you remember, we defined our messages here. We also need to do the same for services. So we have our service, uh, which we need to define here in order to this service to be compiled. And it is called get window median. We can just copy from here. Place here, that's it. So now Katkin should know that there is such service which needs to be compiled. Let's try to compile it actually. So cut can make. Let's see if everything works fine. Take some time. Okay, it seems that everything works fine. I reminding you that we already have ROS core running just in background. If we uh, type foreground, we can see that it's still running. Let's uh, use Control Z and again send it to background. And now let's launch our nodes again. So first we will launch signal generator node. 
and it works fine. Now we will launch our filter node and we see that it also works fine. But what changed uh, is that now we should see the new service into the system. To check which services are available, we can use ROS uh, service command. Uh, and there is the same as ROS topic command, there is list, uh, which will show us all services available within the system. And we see that apart from standard services, we didn't define these services, they're just standard. Uh, they're used for uh, setting loggers uh, and so on, and they're created for every node running the system. We have a new service, which we defined, uh, which has the name getMedian, and this is exactly the name we defined it in signal filter node here, getMedian. This is the name we gave to this service uh, and we can request for info uh, of this service, get median. And we see that it is provided by node called signal filter, and it has specific type, which is called test package get window median. So everything worked, worked correctly. Uh, there is new service, and we can ask this service to give, uh, to, we can call this service. Uh, we can both do this from other node or for command line. For this, there is ROS service call command. Uh, and now we can ask get median uh, to perform something. And if we double tap here, it will help us to fill all data needed to call the service. But in our case, since uh, there is no data we are sending into the service, there is nothing above dashed line, uh, this field is just empty. We don't need anything uh, to send to our service to be called. That is why it just uh, allows us to send empty brackets here. And if we send it as a return, we get success and median value. So exactly what we expected, this service requests a Boolean value and float32 value of computed median. And if we call it multiple time, we can see that median changes because this is median of last five time uh, of last five uh, signal values. So this is how services work. They perform some short computations and they can be called either from command line, but they also can be called from another node. And on the slide, there is example how to add uh, the service call into another node. If we wanted to call this service from another node, uh, you remember that here we defined just service because this is a service server this is something which provides this service and if we want to call it from another node in this node we would define something called service proxy this just allow us to call this uh, particular service with this particular name uh, as a function so once we added service proxy uh, we can call this service just using function syntaxes uh, and here we need to send request data. In our case, it would be just empty. And we will get response, which will have uh, these exact fields as we defined here in our service definition. So, and then within some node, we could do with this response whatever we wanted. For example, use our median in some other uh, computations or make decision based on service response or so on. So services, the same as topics, have two parts. In case of topics, there is publisher, which publishes data in one node, and subscriber, which subscribes into this data in another node. In case of services, there is the same. There is service server, which provides service, and service client, which is defined through service proxy, which can call this service. And again, one service can be called from any uh, other node by using this service proxy. So for example, we, we have some usual service which can transform data from one uh, coordinate system to another. And there can be multiple nodes in the system which will need this transformation. So all of them will call this service uh, and ask to transform data. So that's how services uh, work. Uh, are there any questions so far? So uh, the signal future node is the server here, right? And if we actually request uh, uh, 
to compute the median, then the server will stop doing what it does currently and during it will compute the median and then return to whatever computation it was, right? Uh, you're asking about uh, server, right? So about the thing, uh, in our case, signal filter node, which performs this computation. So yes. this is actually a really good question. Um, we're not going into such details of ROS, but uh, I will just briefly try to explain what happens here. So in this case, uh, in case of this particular node, we have both subscriber and service. And both of them have uh, kind of callbacks, right? So uh, if new data comes to this topic, we will need to trigger this callback, uh, which processes this data. And in case new service request coming, we need to handle uh, this request again with kind of uh, callback with this particular function. So when we give the, you remember this, with this command, ROS by spin, we give the control of ROS and do not perform any computations here inside. So actually within ROS, there are many queues of uh, callbacks. So imagine we had many, many subscribers in one node, which is uh, quite the situation when we uh, build our complex system. One node has to subscribe to multiple data. So imagine we would have many subscribers and many services here. So ROS has the particular queue, which actually can be accessed and can be configured even in different ways uh, of all these callbacks. And if we have data coming to many subscribers and uh, many service requests coming, there is just queue how we process it. So we first trigger first callback of first subscriber, uh, which received new data, process this data, and then come to the next callback and to the next. And sometimes we can run out of time by processing uh, these uh, signals. And that is why in subscriber, there is actually another parameter which is called uh, queue size, I think. Uh, so there is, yeah, it, there is a parameter which is called queue size. And if we are not able to process uh, our uh, data coming here, we just store it in queue. And if we have a free time afterwards, we, pro we take new data from this queue and process it. But this is tricky because usually robotics uh, means like real time and many robotics systems require really fast processing time. So by queuing data, uh, you can break something uh, because you would think that you are processing the recently coming data, but in reality, this is old data which came several seconds ago. So this is tricky and that is why people usually use timestamps. So this header uh, and timestamp allow us to understand this. this data we are processing right now is actually already old and we can just drop it and not process or we have to interpolate it because some time passed and we need to estimate what could change from this time. But the basic answer here is that if we had many subscribers and services, we would have just a queue of processing. And if the service request comes in the middle of processing of our callback, uh, we will not drop the callback. We will end it, uh, we will pr process it till the end and then switch into processing our uh, service request. So something like this. Uh, okay, I see. Thank you. But this is a really advanced topic and there are many uh, wiki pages written on that. So uh, not all actually ROS users even aware of existing of this queue. So this is a really good question. And uh, so ROS is a really complex system under the hood and you can spend many years studying how all this working. And actually there are really advanced ways to work with ROS. Uh, so, as I said, there is a queue of callbacks, but there is actually a way to, to split these queues. For example, you want to perform parallel computing. So, you can split queues for subscribers or for some particular subscriber. Imagine there is data which uh, is really important and you have to process real time. And there are other uh, topics, for example, which are not that important. So, you can create a parallel queue for this important data and make it more important, give it uh, more priority. And ROS will try to first process this one, even if there is new data in a parallel topic, it will skip it until it processed all data coming to this one. So there are many advanced ways to work with ROS uh, if you create really complex systems. 
and there are many wiki pages you can always read but uh, unfortunately the more complex the topics the less information you would find uh, in, in wiki pages so if you're learning really complex uh, ways of working with ROS you have to search through the internet or for some good books because it's not always easy to find this information but I hope you, you've got the, the basic answer. So we have just some cue for, for processing. Um, okay, so let's move, move further. And the last way of communication we need to, to study is called actions. And you already know that actions are uh, from one side, they're the same as services. So there is request and response. But meanwhile, actions is something which can take a long time. For imagine, you can, we can have an example when we ask the robot to move from one point of space to another, and it takes some time, and we don't want to stop all other computations while we are moving. So actions allow us to continue computations because actions are not blocking. Uh, but meanwhile, to get some feedback uh, on our task, and in the end to get response in the form, for example, that our task is complete or something else. Uh, they're not used that often as services and topics, but in some applications you can uh, meet actions and it is really useful uh, to know how they uh, are structured inside. And it is actually interesting that actions under the hood are realized on the topics mechanism. So in reality, you can do the same as actions do only using topics. This is just for simplification for you as for user. Uh, so you don't have to create many topics on your own. These actions create them for you. So let's discuss a bit in more details. Uh, so actions are defined in a specific package of ROS, which called action lib. You can read more. Uh, here is a link. Um, there is also a server side and client side, the same is in services. There is server which provides service and client which calls the service. Uh, and the definition here, oh, I'm sorry for, for some Russian here, I think. Uh, let me just ch change it right away. Definition here contains three parts. If in service we had two parts, request and response, uh, here we have three parts, goal, result, and feedback. Uh, because while we didn't reach the end of this action, we will get feedback. While we, when we reach the end and action is performed, we will get the result. And the same way as messages and services, the definition of uh, action can contain all standard types, uh, some complex types, and also dynamic and fixed length array. And it is interesting, as we already said, that under the hood, uh, actions are using topics mechanism. So when we create action server and action client, actually there are five topics created for us. One for transmitting the goal, one for canceling uh, our action if we want to, and server, uh, gives us back continuous data, which is status, result, and feedback. So there are five topics created when we create our action server, uh, and they're created automatically, so we don't have to write publishers and subscribers for all these five topics, which is really convenient. So, But it is important to understand that under the NIST, there is just simple mechanism of topics, which we already know. And it is also interesting that actions, uh, there is the whole finite state machine of uh, statuses of our particular action. So our action can be rejected, can be uh, aborted, can be printing, pending, and so on. So this is a quite complex state machine of what, of what can happen with our action because action server can process many actions at the time. So some of them again can be queued. If, for example, several uh, clients uh, uh, ask our server to perform some actions, mm, they can be queued or they can be pen pending and so on. So we will not go into details here because uh, there is a huge state machine and this type of communication is not uh, quite common. But now you know that there are five topics that uh, several clients can call uh, single server 
of action and uh, there are different statuses which each task or each action can have. And we will see how actions are defined. So they're defined in the same way as messages and services. There is file.action um, and they also generated in the same way. Let's make sure that in our CMake list, you can see that apart from adding messages and services, we can add actions in the, in the same way. And there are files.action which define actions. We will not define our, uh, our own action today. We will just use some uh, ready to use action in a couple of minutes. So what's interesting here is that there are three parts of the definition, as we said. So there are two dashed lines. The first definition of goal. So this is something which will be sent from server uh, to action, from, from client to the server uh, when we request our server to perform the action. So this is a goal. There is definition of result. This is something which will be sent just once from server to action one, uh, to, from server to client once action is performed. Uh, and there is feedback which will be sent constantly. And for example, it can be percentage of completion or something else, which, uh, and this feedback will be sent continuously from server to client while performing action. So all of these five uh, topics are topics. So data can be streamed continuously, but in case of goal and result, actually only single message is sent. Uh, once a uh, goal is sent in the beginning, result is sent in the end. And only feedback is sent continuously as we uh, would expect from topic. So, and from this definition, actually it is interesting that this action leap or ROS generates for us this number of messages. So we know that these are topics uh, and this number of messages is generated from the single uh, action definition, which in this simple example called do dishes. Uh, so there is message for action, for action goal, result, feedback, and so on. So there are many, many messages generated. A specific message is also generated for status. As we said, our uh, action can have uh, many statuses. So there is a specific uh, message uh, for this status. So we always can get status of our, our action. So we know either it's pending or rejected or it succeeded and so on. And as an example, we will uh, use turtle simulation, which we already familiar. So let's try to launch our turtle simulation and specific action server for our turtle and let's see how it all works. So we will not define our own action, but uh, you know how to define it and how to generate it. And I think on the slides uh, here, uh, you can find how to write it, how to write it within your code. So in Python, uh, we will use uh, a simple uh, action which is already created for us. And there is a tutorial. Let me send it uh, to the chat if you're trying to repeat after me. So we will use a simple tutorial for our turtle bot, which we already familiar. There is a uh, so-called, there is a package called turtle action leap, which realizes a simple action server, which makes our turtle to draw different figures. So let's see how it works. We will first run our turtle sim node from turtle sim package. You already know this package. This is just a simulation of turtle. We worked on the very first lecture on ROS. Uh, let's see what, what how our ROS graph looks like. You remember RQT is a graphical tool to work with uh, different aspects of ROS. Uh, we need the plugin called node graph from introspection uh, folder, node graph. And this will show us uh, the graph of ROS, we see now that there is a single node turtle sim, which is this simulation, and it publishes color of sensor. This turtle has sensor which reads the color underneath. So now it should publish blue here. It also publishes its own pose. 
and it reads uh, comments to velocity. You remember we used Chile operation node to comment this turtle to move, and it was publishing data to this topic, which is read by this uh, node in order to move turtle. So now we will launch action server. Uh, there is package called turtle action lib, and there is shape server. Let's launch it in some new terminal here. Just a sec. Okay, in this terminal, we will launch from another packet package called turtle uh, action leap, we will launch shape server. Uh, it is launched, it doesn't publish anything, but let's see what changed in our ROS graph now. now let's regenerate it. There is a bat button to refresh. Okay, it just, just works slowly because we work from the container. Okay, let's just try to relaunch it. Okay. Now we relaunched, it's updated, and we see that now there is a node called turtle shape. And this turtle shape has something which called action topics. And it is visualized with, with some 3D uh, like rectangular shape. And if we have a uh, click to actions here, it will actually show another representation. And we see that uh, there is the whole bunch of topics and the, the names of these topics uh, give us the understanding that this uh, turtle shape node realizes some action. And you can see that it, it reads the pose of the turtle and publishes comment to this turtle. So I, I guess now at the moment it doesn't publish anything, uh, but it has publisher which can publish to this topic. And it has many topics which look really familiar because this is exactly what we saw here. Uh, there is goal, cancel status, result, and feedback. And it's the same. So turtle shape, result, feedback, status, goal, and cancel. So it gives us the clue that this node realizes some action server. And let's make sure. So there is, uh, okay, let's try to, to make this convenient let's use always on top let's make it smaller a little bit so we could use at least one terminal window okay like this there is a button this button to fit uh, into the window Okay, like this. So now let's try to see uh, which actions are defined uh, within our system. For this, there is ROS. Uh, oh, there is no ROS section. So uh, you remember that these are just topics and we can just publish to these topics. For example, if we want to uh, give a goal to our action server, we can use this topic, turtle shape goal. Let's see what is uh, what is needed to be published into this topic. ROS topic info, uh, turtle shape, turtle shape, goal. So we see that uh, it has a specific type which is called shape action goal, uh, uh, and we can copy this type and see the definition of this message type. For this, uh, we can use ROS msg command. And there is show. And if we give it the name of uh, ROS message we want to show, it will give us the definition of message. And we see that our uh, shape action goal message contains header as usual, you know, for now you know that almost all messages have this header. And also it has some 
uh, goal ID message and shape goal message. And we see that in this shape goal message, there are fields called edges and radius. And we just can guess that by setting these edges and radius, we will give some shape which our turtle will draw. So let's try actually to publish something into this goal topic and see what will happen with our turtle. Uh, so for this, we can use ROS topic pub. This is the comment which allow us to publish some topic from command line. And we will use uh, this goal topic. We'll try to publish something to this goal topic. And if we double tap here, uh, it already has the fields we need to fill in order to publish this message. And everything can be empty here. So we don't, we want to fill timestamp and goal ID. We only will try to specify number of edges and some radius and try to publish this data and see what happens. So if we press enter, uh, parsing and latched messages. Okay, we see that it doesn't work for some reason. Let's think why it doesn't work. So we publish to turtle shape goal topic, uh, the message, and everything looks correct. Let's try to see publishing and launching message to terminate. It should work. Okay, now I'm confused. For some reason, our turtle doesn't move. But, but I don't know why. Turtle shape goal. Okay, we have this, we have this. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I think I know. I think we cannot, uh, I suspended this uh, action. I, so I, I've sent it to foreground, to background. Maybe it doesn't work this way. So try. let's try to bring you back to foreground and open new terminal and see if it works this way. Uh, okay, so now we will try to publish from another terminal and see if it's working. Yes, it, it works. You see, we cannot, I send it this uh, shape server into the background and it doesn't work this way. So we need to bring it back to foreground. So let's try to start from the scratch in order for you to, it to be more clear what, what happens here. Uh, let's kill ROS core and let's start from the very beginning. So first of all, we launch ROS core and we bring, we send it to background like this. So this is a standard way to start ROS. You know that it launches ROS master, ROS parameter server, and ROS out logging node. So we launched it. Now let's run turtle bot, uh, which is turtle sim, turtle sim node, which is a simple simulation of our turtle. And let's make it always on top. And now we are launching, uh, now we are launching another node from another package. Uh, so, there is package called turtle action leap and there is shape server which realizes this action server. So let's launch this one. And now just by publishing into the topic of goal of this server, we can make uh, our server or our action uh, server to perform some actions. And here we just see that goal is defined as number of edges and radius uh, of some figure. And we can make a guess that this server will make our turtle to move and to draw a particular figure. And of course, it is also written in the definition of this turtle action lib. So we can see that turtle action lib demonstrates how to write an action server and client with the turtle sim. The shape server provides an, ac in the, uh, an action interface for drawing regular polygons with the turtle sim. So, this is clear from definition. Let's make our turtle to draw some figure with three edge, edges and radius one. So we see that it works and we can now uh, check other topics of our, uh, of our service. So we know that there is feedback topic, but unfortunately in this simple example, the feedback topic is empty. So there is no feedback from the turtle from the 
uh, turtle while performing this section. Ross, let's try to check. So Ross topic echo. Uh, and let's find the topic dedicated to feedback. So turtle shape feedback. And let's make our turtle to draw another figure. Uh, for example, with four edges. So it should be a square and with another uh, radius. And if we listen for this topic feedback, unfortunately, in this particular case, there is no feedback. Uh, so it is not realized in this action server. But in general case, there could be feedback, for example, how many uh, edges are already drawn or how many time uh, it, it is left to uh, complete this action. But there is another topic we know, which is uh, result to which our action server publishes a result. It publishes it only once when it completed the action. It is the same as service. A service is sent only one response to our request. Here it is the same. There is only one result to one goal. And let's make our turtle to draw some more complex figure. For example, with uh, eight edges and radius two. And we will listen for topic result. And you see that there is no data published to this topic. Uh, but once our turtle will complete our uh, action, it will publish as a result here. And we will see what is the, how result is defined in this particular action server. So it draws the figure. And once it is done, we get a single message to this topic and we can see that there is headers, there is status, and the result itself is uh, two numbers. There is interior angle, which was computed for us in radiance. So this is this angle between two edges of the figure we asked to draw. Is there, and there is apothem, which is the distance from center of the figure to the uh, each uh, edge of the figure. So, this is a nice uh, server ac uh, action server to have. Uh, once again, what, what is idea behind these action servers? So imagine we have a robot, in our case, it's turtle. We can write some generic logic of how to control our robot. So for example, how to give it tasks to move and so on, and hide it within some node and create an action server within this node. And then anybody, any other node or anybody from command line will be able to send goals to our robot and see feedback of performing this goal and get the result once the goal is uh, completed. This is often the case for manipulators, so robots with complex uh, structure with many links. Uh, we can give them the goal, so to which pose we want this robot to move. And uh, they will be moving, uh, meanwhile, sending us feedback how far from the target positions they are. And as you can see, it also can work for mobile or wheeled robots. As for this turtle, we can realize such action and hide all control logic inside this uh, node with action server. And then we will have simple interface of sending a robot to some particular, uh, to some particular uh, point of space. We will just send goal, uh, receive feedback, so we will know how far we are from the goal, and in the end we will get the result that goal is reached. This this is usually used to control robots. However, you can realize it without actions, just with services or topics or like uh, any problem within ROS can be solved multiple ways. So maybe there are some questions about uh, actions. Okay, so we didn't implement our own action, but if you will require this, you always can find the wiki pages in ROS. They're implemented in the same way as messages and services. You just, in your Python code, you just uh, define some server and everything is, uh, all these five topics are automatically created for you. And in the node in which you want to call action server, you also define uh, action client, which will call these topics uh, seamlessly for you. 
and uh, we'll just uh, send tasks to this action server. So this is a simple example. Now you know all three types of communication within ROS. Uh, and there are a couple of more things I wanted to discuss with you. I think we will not finish today, but we'll finish in the last in the next lecture. Uh, let's see what we can handle today. Yeah, let's discuss parameter server. Uh, so we already discussed several times uh, that there is parameter server uh, within ROS, which allow you to store and read parameters. And it can be really useful because you can, you can configure the whole uh, complex robot and place all parameters into this server. And this server can uh, store these parameters. You can read them from command line or from your code. And you can modify these parameters and also you can dump parameters, which is also convenient to imagine you're para, you configuring your robot uh, on the fly. And then you just want to store parameters which you found. For example, you found some optimal parameters for your algorithms and you just want to store them. So with a single command, ROS param dump, you can save all parameters from parameter server. And we discussed it already that there are some supported simple data types which can be used as parameters, but we never tried to work with parameters from the code. So let's try to modify our code in order to work with parameters. Again, on the slide, there is RosPy API on how to work with these parameters. And again, there is just basic examples. Uh, there is more powerful API for working in parameters with ROS, and you can read this on parameter server page. Uh, here, I just uh, show you the simplest, uh, simplest comments. So for example, reading parameters, and there are different uh, types of parameters and both actually it works for topics and so on. We will discuss it on the next lecture that there are uh, the powerful namespaces system in ROS in order not to mess up parameters. And parameters can be relative, private, global, and so on. For us, it doesn't matter today. We will discuss it next time. Uh, so with, with command get param, you can read parameter. Uh, with command set param, you can set some value of the parameter on parameter server. Uh, and you can also check for param existence. For example, you are not sure that the parameter with this name uh, is defined. You can check this and you can delete parameter from parameter server. So let's try to modify our code to work with parameters. Um, and we will perform the following thing. We have our signal filter node. It works well, but there is some hard coded value of how many uh, signal values to use in order to compute sliding uh, average. And we want to modify this uh, number so we don't have to recompile our code every time. So if we read this number from parameter, it will be useful, we can configure our system, then launch it, then see what happens, uh, and then reconfigure and launch again, and so on. So let's read the parameter here. Uh, so we will use parameter called window size. There is a new variable we define. And then using rospy get param, we will, the same as here, rospy get param, We'll read some parameter. Let's imagine that this parameter is called uh, in the same way, window size. And it will be a global parameter. So we started with slash. It means that is available for all nodes in the system. We'll discuss this, this in the next lecture. So you see this is a global name uh, starting from slash. And then we will use this parameter uh, here instead of five. So just window size and here we'll substitute five to n. Uh, let's now launch, that's it. So now we are reading some parameter and we are reading this parameter only once in the init function. So we will read it only when we initialize our node. Uh, we could define it somewhere here uh, in, in the cycle. So we could check for this parameter value periodically. And if this parameter value changes, we would change something in our logic, this is also available. But in our simple example, we will read uh, this parameter value only once on the node startup. 
So let's try to launch our node. Do we have ROS core running? Let's start from the scratch, ROS core. Okay, we launched our ROS core. I will send it to background with control Z command. Now we will run ROS, uh, ROS run test package signal signal filter node and uh -huh. so there is some some error okay i see what happened this is actually really interesting so imagine here we are reading parameter uh, and trying to create signal window or queue with the size of this parameter but imagine if this parameter is not defined in, in our ROS parameter server. This variable then will have none value. And here we will get an error trying to create uh, the queue of the size of none. That's what happened to us because we didn't define this parameter anywhere and just tried to read it and there is no such value, of course. That is why there is a second argument we can uh, use in get param command, which is default value. So if there is no parameter with this name, this variable will get default name, uh, value, which is five. So in this way, it should work. Uh, let's fi first launch signal generator node. And now we will launch signal filter node. But before that, let's also add some logging here. So after creating, uh, after creating our window, let's print what size this window have. So window size and then format window size. This will allow us to understand what, what happens and if it works at all. So let's launch our filter node. There is some, some error. Signal pop, signal filter object has no attribute. Just a second. So we've got some error, but it is not, I think, related to what we just changed. Maybe I modified something. Signal filter object has no attribute signal pop. I was modifying something here while showing you. So there are two subscribers, first of all for some reason. I think I was modifying code while uh, discussing queues of subscribers. And I think that this was what happened. Uh, uh -huh. Line 33. Okay, I deleted publisher from here for some reason while I was modifying code. Let's return our publisher signal pop rust by publisher uh, sig filtered signal i think that's how our third signal that's how our published topics was uh, called do we need we don't need callback here so let's try and the name was signal pop i think signal pop publish yes so now i think we restored our code yes now it, it works well but there was some error again in the beginning the publisher should be created with this keyword q size uh-huh so it, it helps us that we need to define q size here let's define it as one and now i think everything is restored and it should work well. Yeah, and we see that the first message here here is window size five because we don't have any parameter defined here and that is why it uses just standard value, just default value five. Uh, so now let's, before starting our node, let's define this parameter. For this, we can use uh, the command line tool called rosparam. And you see that there is delete, dump, list, get, and there is a set command. And here we need to define 
parameter name, which is in our case, window size, window size, and we will place, I think like the syntax is the following. So we need to use 10 here. Okay, let's see if this param is defined, ROS param list will show us all params and we see that there is window size now because we defined it through ROS param set. And let's see the number which is stored in this param through ROS param get, we can get the particular parameter uh, window size and we will see that number is 10 here. Okay, now we define the parameter and launching our signal filter node, we should see that now window size changed uh, yeah, and we see that window size is now 10. So we will use another window size to filter our signal. And we actually can, the last thing we will do today, we can see how it influences uh, our filtration, which is interesting because we change this window size in order to uh, adapt our filter. So let's open visualization plot here. Let's close ROS graph. You remember how to use this plot. We add signal here, which is our initial signal. And then if we stop after scroll and choose this tool and use right button, we can modify the scale. It is not really convenient, but as we discussed last time, this is the simplest ROS tool for working with these plots. There are many more convenient tools for this. So, for some reason, I cannot modify the scale here. Uh, just a sec. Okay, this is at least something. But it's really inconvenient. Okay, now I managed. So we see our signal. Uh, and if we launch our, let's first set parameter back to five. Uh, Par ROS param set window size five. Let's launch our signal filter node and add another topic here, which is filtered signal. We will see that filtration, uh, there is some filtration uh and there is some delay but not big one we are just a bit uh, delaying output signal from input one but you also can see that we do not filter some peaks sometimes there are still peaks in our filtered signal let's now relaunch and set some bigger window for example 10 and we will see that now uh, the filtration is smoother but the delay is increased. And this is known uh, property of uh, moving average. The bigger uh, window size we have, the smoother signal we obtain, but the bigger delay we, we get. So, but we now see that it's quite well smoothed, our input signal. And let's now try to get some radical huge window, for example, 50, and reload our filter node and see how our parameter uh, changed how our, our filtration changed. You can see now that we have huge delay. Everything is quite well smoothed. And actually the amplitude or magnitude is smaller because we are just averaging uh, many peaks, both positive and negatives. That's why our magnitude is smaller and delay is huge. Actually it's half of period delay. So that is why the too big window sizes uh, actually spoil our signal quite a lot. So that is how using parameter, we can change parameter of our, uh, our nodes on the fly and see how they work, how they perform. And actually, if we had wrote this uh, parameter reading uh, somewhere in the loop, we wouldn't even be, uh, we will need, we will not need to relaunch our node. We could just change parameter on the fly and uh, it would uh, right away influence our file filtration. But that makes logic of the node a bit more complex. That is why we realized a simple example where we read parameter value in the uh, startup of our node. 
So that is how you use parameters in ROS. And now we covered almost all basic uh, approaches to data uh, transmission and parameters in ROS. So next time uh, we will discuss ROS launch, which is a useful tool to work with ROS when we have multiple nodes, multiple parameters, and we don't want to have uh, this nightmare of many terminal windows. So next time we will study how to work with a single terminal window or a couple of terminal windows with ROS and how to structure launch of our system uh, in a specific file. And then we will see different high level debugging tools such as simulators and visualization tools which allow us to work uh, with ROS and make our life and debugging of our systems simpler. So that's it for today. Thanks a lot. Do you have any questions?